Hey, what's up guys? Toogie here, back again. A very tired Toogie, back again with another video. And today, well, we have something interesting to talk about for once. For once, for the first time in about a week, we get away from minor trades and RFA speculation. We actually have something to talk about. A one for one trade. The Chicago Blackhawks acquire Alex Nylander from the Buffalo Sabres in exchange for Henry Yokiharu. Now, I will say this. I don't like declaring winners for trades at all. At all, really. I think it's it's often a foolish thing to do. But Buffalo seem like winners here. And I'll admit, and we'll look at Alex Nylander first. Alex Nylander took a step up last season. And I know, obviously, you know Nylander traded to Chicago was a, a headline that a lot of people couldn't help but, uh, but go forward with. But 12 games last season, not bad. Very good point per game pace at the AHL level. A 2016 first round pick. I don't hate the pickup in theory for Chicago. I mean, we've seen what they've done with Dylan Strom, and obviously it's a little bit of a different, you know, there's a different set of circumstances there. Dylan Strom, a little bit more experienced at the NHL level than Nylander is at this point. The, the issue is that they gave up Henry Okiharu, and I just don't understand why. I truly don't. We'll take a look at the team here in a little bit. But the most intriguing fact out of all of this now is that the Blackhawks have traded every single first-round pick that they've made from apparently 2011 to 2017. If you're a first-round pick in Chicago, Kirby Doc, heads up, buddy. You might not be around for that much longer. Uh, and while Yokiharu only has, I mean, granted, he played 38 games last year. And he was one of Chicago's better defensemen. And what I was going to say is, while that might not, you know, to most people mean much, because Chicago's defense was, eh, uh, at best, for the most part, uh, it's still impressive for numbers like that. And again, you can go look advanced stats-wise. Uh, but for a 20-year-old defenseman to do that, technically he was 19 throughout the season, it's a damn good pickup. For Buffalo, and it leaves you with, and we'll actually take a look at the defensive setups here. I went, I went into ye old word pad for this one because you you had to. Although here, this might. Oh, hey, let me zoom in again. There you go. Screw it. That's good enough. So it leaves you with this situation here as far as a depth chart with the Buffalo Sabers on that left hand side. It's not bad. I mean, they still have to sign Jake McCabe. Uh, but for the most part, Darlene, of course, leading the way. And you help, you, I mean, you have options to fill out the rest of the roster. I mean, you have help. It's not the, the most amount of help for Darlene on that left hand side. If you want a lefty over there, Marco Scandella, Matt Hunwick, Pilot, and John Gilmore, who they just signed over from the Rangers, it's not too bad. In the system, Ryan Johnson, Matias Samuelson. It could be worse. That right-hand side, however, is stacked at this point, which has only led people to assume that Rasmus Ristolainen is going to be traded, as has been rumored for a while now. But that right-hand side, Risto, Montour, who they acquired last year, Colin Miller, who they just acquired, Zach Bogosian, although I don't know if you want to trust that. His health issues are, you know, certainly there, at least his injury, you know, his injury history is concerning. Casey Nelson, who wasn't too bad of an option. Will Borgen, uh, I think it's Casey Fitzgerald as well. And then Yoki Haru, and they don't have Loxon and signed, who's not a bad option either. Uh, Buffalo, with a little bit of an assortment of riches on that right-hand side. You compare that to what the Blackhawks look like at this point, and it, it's kind of scary because that left-hand side, as far as guys that they have under contract, not too bad. Duncan Keith, still a formidable defenseman. Uh, Gustafson was quietly one of the best point producers amongst defensemen last season. Calvin DeHaan, of course, is going to start the season as you know, um, as an injured player, for lack of a better term. We're leaving that in. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Olimata, where there's a lot of question marks. You have a couple of decent prospects there, obviously. Badan, Chris, Gilbert, still not that bad. It it could be worse. And then guys like Alex Vlasic, who they just drafted, Ryan Shea as well. It's still looking okay. But that right hand side. Uh, that's it. Seven right-handed defensemen within their organization, and the only three under contract right now are Seabrook, Murphy, and Boakvist. Now, Seabrook and Murphy, not good. I think you can objectively say that, at least for last season, not good at all. So you have an over-reliance on left-handed defensemen, 
Maybe Boakvist. I mean, I, I assume Boakvist will be on the team. Probably. You might want him to be on the team. I mean, gave Yokiharu the chance last season. I mean, right now, Elite Prospects just going with the assumption that he's going to be in Rockford next season. I, from Chicago's perspective, I don't understand this for what it does to this defense. I, I simply can't understand this move. I mean, you look at Alex Nylander amongst the current listed right wings and elite prospects. Kane, Debrinkit, Shaw, who they just reacquired. Then Nylander. I mean, do you go Kane, Debrinkit, Nylander, Shaw? I don't know. We don't know what Anton Wadin is going to be. Uh, he just came over from Sweden, played with Timra last season. So we don't know what he's going to be. Dylan Sakura is not a terrible option, but it's it's a little bit rough. I mean, there's no way Alex Nylander is getting top six time this upcoming season. I mean, maybe though, I, I guess. I mean, that left-hand side is still a bit of a question mark for Chicago. They still have to sign Perlini. Uh, Alex Fortin, I wouldn't imagine we'd see. Kublik, I would imagine we'd see. So you have Kajula and Saad. And then at center, I mean, Tav, Strom, and Isimov. Camp can play the right side. Carpenter can play the right side. John Quimble, who they just acquired from New Jersey in exchange for John Hayden. There are a lot of question marks amongst this roster, and it just seems like a very odd trade. Now, Buffalo, I get that there are some Sabres fans who are worried that Alex Nylander is just going to, you know, make the Sabres work at this trade. It's happened before as far as, oh, you let go of that player. And, of course, now he's amazing. Arizona, I mean, looking at Dylan Strom at the end of last season, Coyotes fans probably not all that excited about how he ended up doing. And I still think Alex Nylander has NHL potential. I mean, the guy's only 21. He's only 21. It seems like that 2016 draft was forever ago. And in a way, that's because it kind of was. That was the Matthews and Line draft. It feels like it was a while ago. But you look at who else was drafted there. I mean, there are still some solid prospects who you would expect to eventually make it to the NHL. I mean, obviously, like someone like Pooley Arby, that's a whole different circumstance. You know, set of circumstances. Only love his head injuries. But right now, it's just it's a good trade. It's a good trade for Buffalo. Again, we talked about the defensive depth that they have now, particularly on that right-hand side. Now, you take Alex Nylander out of that situation. Right wings for Buffalo, Okpozo, Sherry, Thompson, and Olofsson, who I imagine will get an opportunity. Uh, Victor Olofsson killed it in the AHL last year. That's the only way to describe it. 63 points in 66 games. A very impressive point total, so I imagine he gets a shot out of camp. I mean, if you're Buffalo, you probably could have been like, hey, Nylander second or third line to start the season and see what happens from there. I mean, you know, the wing depth, at least on the left-hand side, is a little bit better now with Skinner and Johansson. I imagine Jimmy BC might get moved over to that right-hand side. Time will tell. But it, it's not it's not the worst thing in the world for Buffalo to have done this because, again, the assumption is that you trade Risto, you go out and get a little bit of extra help on the wing because it's center. Ideally, you're good. I mean, I know Sam Reinhardt's been playing right wing primarily but you think about it, Eichel, you know, middle stats of Boca Gergensen, so they re-signed. It's not the worst bit of center depth as long as, you know, middle stat can really kind of step up, although second line center, you know, middle, middle six, probably the third line would be a better way to start. It leaves both teams with a lot of question marks. And I think in the short term, we immediately look to Buffalo and say, okay, what are you doing next? Because there's no way you're not trading a defenseman. You have to. Like, you, you have to. Like, you, <laughs> what are you, you going to do when arguably everybody there but Fitzgerald, I guess, could be expected or, you know, you could reasonably assume, yeah, they, they could be, you know, it could be Sabres this upcoming year. Say you even cut out Borgen and Nelson. That still leaves you with five players. <laughs> they have to do something. Not saying, of course, that you have to play lefties on the left and righties on the right, but it's kind of the preferred way to go, obviously. <laughs> So I just, I I don't, I don't know, man. I just don't know what to tell you on this front. So for Buffalo, I mean, hey, there's a chance it could come back to bite you. But for the most part, I think you're good to go. And for Blackhawks fans, 
you know, the, the forward depth's looking good, promising, and Nylander helps that. But my god, that defensive situation, especially, again, the, the one thing that really stands out to me, three right-handed defensemen signed, two of them not good, and one of them was just drafted last year. We'll see how this works out for the Chicago Blackhawks and the Buffalo Sabres moving forward. Again, very intrigued to see if Buffalo ends up making a deal. I am going to bed, but let me know what you think of the deal, and uh, I will see you guys soon. Again, hopefully this is the kickstart of some more silliness, because please, my God, free agency has been rather boring.